Hello and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. I'm Daryl Griffiths and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end I'll pick my favourite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP techie news this week. SAP and NVIDIA join forces to create SAP Business AI. The already announced Business AI Dual Copilot will allow SAP customers to expose their data and use SAP tools to access and augment that data with AI capabilities. This partnership with NVIDIA will allow SAP to make use of NVIDIA's latest AI-focused microservices-based applications hosted in containers that are built for execution against the newest NVIDIA GPUs. An article on the register highlights the struggle SAP customers have right now with their IT budgets and how DSAG, the German SAP user group, have found that IT budgets for this coming year will increase, but increase less than the previous year. Yet, in the same report, the use of S4HANA in organisations has only increased slightly compared to last year. This doesn't sound good for all those customers still needing to move to S4HANA from ECC against a backdrop of sharp inflationary induced consultancy costs and tighter budgets. This links to an article on CIO.com regarding SAP customers' views on SAP's S4HANA cloud strategy. The standout quote I found was, only 13% of those surveyed had a positive opinion, just under half had a negative one. AWS News and the AWS Launch Wizard is now able to deploy SAP systems running on SAP ASE database. Good news for those making use of SAP's other enterprise-grade database. Although it doesn't provide a HADR deployment, I'm sure that will come eventually. HADR is the high availability option for ASE. The last article this week is on PR Newswire and announces that Deutsche Telekom has chosen Rise with SAP and S4HANA Private Cloud Edition. The article talks about how T-Systems' recently SAP certified private cloud offering called Future Cloud Infrastructure, FCI, will underpin the Rise platform on which Deutsche Telekom systems will be hosted. This style of deployment is a tailored option or customer data center option for RISE with SAP S4HANA Private Cloud and will therefore involve both SAP and T-Systems in managing the infrastructure beneath the RISE platform for Deutsche Telekom. The article cites German and EU data protection and regulatory reasons for this choice of hosting. If you ever get a chance to read up on the whole sovereign cloud debate, I wholly encourage it. Choosing a cloud platform has never been so difficult. My favorite item this week is the SAP and NVIDIA partnership announcement. I'm sure you've all seen NVIDIA in the news recently with their huge stock valuations linked to their new AI targeted GPU offerings. The boom in AI use and demand for AI optimized processing capabilities means that platform providers like Azure, AWS and GCP will be clamoring to deploy the necessary hardware to support the newest NVIDIA GPUs. Linking off the SAP article to various NVIDIA website pages shows that every hyperscaler also has similar partnership announcements and of course some details on how they will be packaging up the NVIDIA GB200 processor dubbed Grace Blackwell Superchip that's where they get the GB. None of the hyperscalers are yet able to confirm which series of virtual machines these new superchips will be available in, but most do explicitly say that they will be hosting the new NBL72, the liquid-cooled rack of 36 Grace Blackwell superchips. Except for Microsoft. The Microsoft announcement only infers this, but does not state it. Will Azure get the MV72? Strangely, at the end of the Microsoft press release, it talks about a Microsoft-developed physical keyboard key specifically for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Is that a step too far? Internet keyboard, anyone? Looping back into the SAP-specific announcement, we see that it talks about NVIDIA NIM, which is NVIDIA's microservice packaging of acceleration capabilities to ease the development and deployment of AI-embedded applications such as Copilots. NIM stands for NVIDIA Inference Microservice, so it really doesn't need the microservices to follow it. These microservices are packaged up, containerized and loaded with the required capabilities to call out to the NVIDIA hardware layer and can be hosted in a range of container orchestration platforms or even call out to the NVIDIA DGX Cloud, which is an NVIDIA hosted version of the NVIDIA DGX rack. We know that SAP's intentions are to embed its own AI copilot named Joule into as many of its own cloud products and services as possible. But as well as SAP's own internal developers using NIM, to me it looks like it should be simple for SAP to wrap and expose NIM and offer customers their own capability to create their very own custom AI using NVIDIA's pre-trained models against their own data. 
if we were to tie this up with SAP's recent news about SAP Datasphere, where customers can access any data sources from Datasphere, maybe what we are seeing is a behind the scenes look at a future BTB based AI platform for customers to build their very own co-pilots, capable of augmenting their search with customer data, both SAP and non-SAP. That kind of matches up with the quotes on the SAP announcement from Jensen Huang, founder and CEO of NVIDIA. He says, SAP is sitting on a gold mine of enterprise data that can be transformed into custom generative agents to help customers automate their businesses. Together, NVIDIA and SAP will bring custom generative AI to the thousands of enterprises around the world that rely on SAP to power their operations. So, we will have Joule for use in SAP products, but SAP customers will also be able to create their own co-pilots in BTP for use with their own BTP developed applications. With all this talk about hardware hosting and GPUs, does it not become apparent that SAP's stance of only providing the newest AI related features in the cloud is the correct one? With Datasphere as a clear AI data hub, will SAP prevent customers from creating their own Datasphere equivalent by not providing a vector engine capability to the non-cloud version of SAP HANA? Go back to episode 9 for more on that topic. As always, reference links are in the description, drop me a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and always wash your hands after leaving the cubicle. Bye bye.